Welcome to Kingdom Warriors. I'm sharing with you today the power of spirituality over mortality. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. But a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? So from here, we are told by God, who is the source of all wisdom, victory, and power. Amen. He's giving us the inside information. He's telling us that our spirit is our most important part. It's just like your heart is the most important part. Your head is very important. So our spirit is the most important part. Not our intelligence, feelings, nor willpower. Okay, so our spirit is the central processing unit. It's the most important part where we receive power, where we receive wisdom from God. And we are told in this scripture that even when the body is sick, painful, and falling apart, and the environment is troublesome, challenging, and tough, our spirit can still keep us intact, functioning, and winning. Praise the Lord for that. However, if our spirit is weakened or broken or not charged up or laid back then it's going to be really difficult almost impossible to survive the tough time so we need to be very very uh, conscious of what god's word is saying and live our life uh, successfully according to his word because his word is the roadmap to success because God wants us to be successful. He doesn't want us to fail because we belong to him and we represent him on the earth. Now, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, I'm reading from the uh, NIV, New International Version. Uh, at the end of that verse, Paul said, Are you not acting like mere men, mere humans? Implying that we must stop acting like just like mortals we must stop acting just like mortals we are more than mortals in fact we are immortal we have been given the supernatural power we've been given the born again identity and reality we have been positioned in the spirit in the high places amen by the lord so our spirituality is on the line whenever we are just thinking in an ordinary human intellectual and business way. Spirituality is of a higher and greater place than mortality. Our spirit does not worry, fear or reason negatively or fearfully even cautiously inclined. No, our born-again spirit is incorruptible, forever high and victorious, and forever above the natural and the human side of us. Yet, pay attention to this. My spirit and your spirit can be oppressed, locked up, shut up, and not consulted. But that's your choice and my choice. So how do I know which part of me is speaking or leading me? How do I know whether, you know, it's my spirit or my soul speaking to me or leading to me or leading me? Well, the spirit is quiet and soft-spoken. The soul is loud, insistent stubborn even, competitive and self-righteous. The spirit is meek and mild. That's how we can discern. If you think that you are the know-it-all, you are in the flesh. If you think that you can't talk to anybody, can't consult anybody, you are in the flesh. If you are in self-pity, you are in the flesh. When I say in the flesh, I mean in the soul, in the human soul. 
When you're full of fear, definitely in the human soul. When you're offended, definitely in the soul. So, what do I mean by don't lose your spirituality to your mortality? If we do not turn to our spirit intentionally, consistently,、um, steadfastly, consciously, habitually, then our human soul will take the driver's seat. Just like Jezebel did in First Kings chapter twenty-one, you have to read that yourself. The human soul will always endorse and pamper the lust, the cravings of the flesh, and will throw a fit if we didn't get our way, like Ahab did. And if we did not allow our born again spirit to take the lead. Then together, the human soul and the human body will join and and form an alliance to cause the person to compromise and lead him or her astray down that lukewarm, self-destructive, and religious path. So we must choose. We must decide. We must dedicate. To living a spirit-led, God-conscious, kingdom-oriented, supernatural life, for that is the indefeatable, undefeatable high life that you and I are designed for. Let's read Galatians chapter five, verse sixteen in the Amplified Bible. But I say, walk and live habitually in the spirit. Being responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit, then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and the desires of the flesh, of the human nature without God. I call that the human soul. So the Holy Spirit, through Paul, is telling us that there is a sure win. There is a way. There is a victorious, sure win way. What is the way? Walk in the spirit, not occasionally, but habitually. Being responsive to the spirit, our human spirit, controlled, led, and guided by the Holy Spirit. That is the sure win. The spirit we are told in the scripture by the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the Bible. He tells us that our spirit, once it's born again, has power over the human soul, can control it against self harm, against demonic attacks, against all the agenda and all the devices of the devil. Your spirit and my spirit, our born again spirit, must be in the driver's seat all the time. If you read Galatians chapter five verse seventeen in the Amplified Bible, for the desires of the flesh are opposed to the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are opposed to the flesh, for these are antagonistic to each other, continually withstanding and in conflict with each other. So that you are not free, but are prevented from doing what you desire to do. Now, this you is referring to you as a person. So, it's your choice to allow your spirit to take over, or your human side, or we call it the soul, or you call it the flesh, to take over. And we cannot have both because the Bible says very clearly that they are antagonistic to each other, even. Even when we have been born again, and that's why the scripture said states that we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. So there is still that that human side, that flesh side, or that carnal side that we have to deal with on a continual basis. You have to habitually subdue it. You have to habitually reign over it. Habitually train it.
And that's why even Jesus, he he told us in、uh, Matthew chapter six,、uh, verse twenty four, and also Luke chapter sixteen, verse thirteen,、uh, in the King James Bible. Jesus said, "No man can serve two masters." He said, "This is an impossibility. Don't ever think that you can do it." No, he said, "No, no. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold on to the one and despise the other." So this is a fact, and we need to. Admit it, and we need to humble ourselves and submit to the Word of God, telling us that there's no way that you can serve、uh, your spirit and your soul together. There's no way you cannot you cannot have、uh, one foot in the world and one foot in the church. You cannot pamper yourself and submit to God at the same time. It's just simply impossible. There has to be a submission.、Uh, there has to be a subduing of the human soul. To obey God, Jesus said, "You cannot serve God and Mammon." Now, notice that、uh, the soul now is being replaced by the word Mammon because the soul is very much tied in with pleasures, joy,、um, what money can do for you, what you can get through money, and that's why it's the altar、uh, to Mammon. It's the idol of money. So let's look at these scriptures. So the the first revelation is that we cannot have the spirit and the human soul at the same level of importance in our lives. We must submit the soul to the spirit. That's how we live a godly, profitable, and successful life, in the sight of God, not in the sight of men. And we must not be confused, and we must live in the spirit, walk in the spirit. That's the key to godly success, to kingdom success. And if you do, then if I do that, amen. We will not be struggling and striving within ourselves and with someone else. It's forever settled in heaven. The next revelation is that Mammon serves not. Ah,、uh, sorry. The next revelation is that Mammon serves us, not the other way round. Mammon is to serve us, not for us to serve Mammon. It's very important, Amen. That we don't mix this, that we don't get this wrong. Mammon or money is your servant, not the other way round. Money must serve you. And you must hold on to this truth. When you insist that money must serve you, it will come into subjection. We are the master, not the slave. We are not to be driven, not to be controlled by the demon of money. Remember that demon wants to haunt, harass, and control a man. But that's not what God has created any human being for. We're not created to be slaves. No, no, no. We have been created to be masters. Amen. The demon of Mammon, you know, had destroyed how many marriages, homes, people, the lives of people, and nations. How many had committed suicide, crime, and shameful acts just because of money? We are not made to serve money. Money. Had been divinely positioned to serve us, so take your position biblically, and you will prosper. The third revelation is that God will not submit Himself to be equal with the devil. You cannot serve Him and money at the same level. You cannot serve God and yourself at the same level. Remember Dagon. Read First Samuel chapter five. Remember that Dagon. They were putting Dagon at the same level as God, as the Ark of the Covenant. But then what happened? What happened?、Uh, as soon as they came back, they 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 arose early in the morning, and then they found that Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the Ark of the Lord. And then、uh, they did it again, again. The Dagon fell, and this time, what happened? The head of Dagon and the palms of his hands were all cut off, and only the stump of Dagon was left to him. So, 
Remember, the devil is no equal with God, and we cannot afford to give a place of prominence to the God of Mammon in our hearts. We cannot do that. When we do that, we are unconsciously、uh, betraying God and allowing the devil to sow weeds in our soul, and then we cut ourselves off from the blessings of God. Remember, the material gain that comes to you, if the source is of the devil, then it will manipulate and corrupt you. It's like the cursed thing,、uh, which Archon took.、Uh, read Joshua chapter seven. So yes, the Bible is talking about even legitimate financial concerns. I'm talking about daily expenses like phone bills, house rent,、uh, children's fees, and all of that. And remember, God cares for you. And if you would just believe and trust Him, use your faith, then the windows of finances will be opened unto you, and they will stay open. Amen. And angels will bring. There are angels of prosperity, and they work, and they will continue to visit you, and they will establish and bless the works of your hands. Remember, Jesus said, "Look at the lilies." God knows what they need, and God keeps them beautiful, and they keep blossoming. He said, "How much more valuable you are to these natural things." And then he said, "The key is that use your faith instead of your worries." Amen. It's very important. And then he said in Luke chapter twelve, verse thirty-one, "But rather seek you." First, now seek is a proactive word. Seek you first the kingdom of God. God put God's agenda first, God's priority first, and He has promised that all these financial blessings, material needs, material、uh, wants shall be added unto you. The financial and material provisions will be added unto you. So practice our faith based on the word, on the promise of God, and experience God's provision for you on a daily basis. Amen. Remember, your spirit is powerful. Don't ever forget that. Always charge, build, and nurture your spirit. And most important of all, put your spirit in the prominent position. Amen. That's your candlestick. And let your word-filled Holy Spirit, anointed, born-again Spirit, lead you all the way in your life journey, and you definitely are destined to success. God bless you. Amen.